in our world. The world we live in. The one we breathe in and eat in and all the things we do in our world. And so, what in the world has happened to our world? Well, we should be aware of the condition of it. And that is the reason for our show. One of our viewers suggested a show about Babylon. More specifically, what is Babylon? Where is Babylon? And do we live in Babylon right now? And so we decided to do just that. So let's find out. Do we live in Babylon? Our world? Is it Babylon? Do any of you even know what Babylon is? Well, I can tell you it's a wonderful place, a beautiful place. It seemed to be the epitome of human civilization, a paradise. It seems to have been the place of great beauty and great wealth and great prominence and great influence and a very powerful place. So, as described, that was Babylon. And so do we live in Babylon, this wonderful city? All right, that should be good enough to get the TikTok people attention for just a moment. We're talking about our world, as we always do. And a viewer suggested we do a show comparing our world to a place called Babylon. Hmm. So, we weren't sure if people listening to the show in our world even know what Babylon is. So, we should tell you a little bit about what Babylon is, because you can't really Google much about it. And so we, we were torn with how to present Babylon to our world, the people living here. Not what I think the world is, but what it really is. Everybody from China to Australia to Kansas <laughs> Wherever you are, we're living in a world. And we're trying to actually talk about that world, our world. And a viewer wanted us to compare our world to Babylon. And so now we're going to get into all kinds of stuff. Because it's not much in it. It's an ancient city. The historians, the, the boomers would know what we're talking about. I'm not sure that TikTokers even know what Babylon is. And so we have to kind of take it how we're going to do this. And so we decided to do it kind of whimsical because we like to have fun. And not take it too serious, but just, uh, just honor the question that the viewer requested. Does or do we live in Babylon? So, well... We're going to find out. And that may not be as much fun as, as you thought. Because I, I did say Babylon was a wonderful city. And it is. It was. Everything I said was true about it. And as we get to know this place called Babylon, you'll see that it, it was a fascinating place. There's no doubt. But, spoiler alert, doesn't end well for Babylon. What do you mean it doesn't end well for Babylon? Well, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't end well for Babylon uh, because uh, the ancient Babylons are all gone and so there aren't really any active Babylons around so most people would go like, what are you talking about? And so we're talking about Babylon. You have to get out some books called the Bible and the Quran and things like that because they're mentioned in most biblical texts most religions refer to it they really do uh, but I don't want to get into all the religions uh, descriptions of it because that's that would take 85,000 shows 
But, so, I don't think you can talk about Babylon. The viewer was obviously talking about the biblical Babylon. Okay? Because, obviously, there isn't really a Babylon. So, we assume she meant the biblical Babylon. Because a lot of people these days are always saying the end of the world's coming and all of that. And so we're just trying to figure out, just for the sake of argument, uh, do we live in this biblical Babylon that's mentioned in the end times revelations? Do we live in that place right here, right now, in our world? And so that was what we were assigned. Our viewer requested this, and we decided to give it a go. And so that's kind of where we are. But it put us to a lot of work. We had to really think this one out. Because we don't do anything halfway here. No, sir. Our viewer wants to know if we live in the biblical Babylon, and we took on the task to answer Answer her. She had a question and she came to us. And, and we decided to give her a good answer. And it's not going to be a five minute video. We can do it any way you want. We can talk about this for quite a while. But we're going to be as concise as possible. Understanding that that's the way it is now. Our world doesn't have time to waste. And we're not going to waste it. But we are going to talk about Babylon the biblical Babylon, because there really isn't another one, and our viewer told us to find out. Welcome to our world, and our listener has assigned us to find out a whole lot about a place called Babylon. The viewer's request was that we compare the biblical Babylon to our world today. And so, that took us to, uh, to, to, we had to research Babylon where we could find it. Guess what? In the Wikipedia, listed it as the whore of Babylon. So we decided to see what that would take us. And we went to some other places where the whore of Babylon was referred to. And so from this point, uh, let's keep that in mind, that this wonderful city and several reference points Wikipedia and all over anything in Google you you saw a reference to something called the whore of Babylon and so we're just going to go with it and so Babylon the Great we've all heard of that probably but also known as the whore of Babylon refers to both a symbolic female figure and place of evil mentioned in the book of Revelation in the King James Bible. Her full title is stated in Revelation 17, verse 5, as Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and abominations of the earth. That's the full title. Hmm. Okay, so we're just trying to... Find out about this place, and as we start digging, uh, we find out that it's, a, it's pretty complicated. And so we don't want to get our study uh, warped by religious dogma, but unfortunately, that's going to be the best place to find out about it. And so we're going to have to sort of wade through some of that, and that's kind of where we are right here. And so you can see... That if we do live in Babylon, it's also got a nickname. The billboard says the whore of Babylon. It's got a lot of titles. No, wait. Just You said official title. What, what exactly did you mean there? No, that's it was officially in Revelations, the book of Revelations, 17 verse 5. This, this is where they're... I guess that's... It's title. That's what the book of Revelation said. It was its title, official, in some capacity. And it had those negative comments. Shall I read them again? Well, 
it was uh, not very not very pleasant to say the least abominations uh, you know things like that and so I think we could take the discussion and save everybody a whole lot of time and we, we're going to research the Babylon as much as we can t tell but I think we can do a like a wormhole cut through here and save everybody a whole lot of time because this Babylon they described sounds like a lot of places and so we're talking about a symbolic symbolic Babylon more so than a real place but obviously it is a real place because it has it has a a very bad end not to spoil the plot and it's described and we'll we'll get into that don't worry we're going to describe this Babylon to you but I wanted to do the wormhole to get everybody's brain thinking how minds thinking a little so we can follow it along is that the symbolic Babylon probably was all those places that it resembles because it resembles Rome it resembles every empire the Egyptians uh, you could go on and on and they all have personalities that match this Babylon and so certainly we could be living in this Babylon that meets the very bad end and that alone would be worth talking about because it just is okay so we're trying to find out about Babylon and so we went in the direction of the religious uh, text we thought that was the best way to get the quickest uh, information so that took us to uh, King James Bible Revelation 17 uh, it states that, or describing that chapter, so you get a little, you know what we're going to be getting this information from for this segment. Now, that's the 17th chapter of the book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse to John in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. Now, the book is traditionally attributed to John the Apostle, but the precise identity of the author remains a point of academic debate. This chapter describes the judgment of the whore of Babylon, or Babylon the harlot. We go to verse 1, and we can learn a lot from that. We're just going to glean the highlights to try to figure out what this Babylon is. And then it says, and Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, presumably John, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. Verse 2, With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. I think that's something we should digest just a minute. Let's talk about that. We're looking for a place called Babylon. When it sounds like it might not be referring to a place. They call it a city, but you have to understand a lot of times those words don't mean the translations are very important. So it's definitely not out of the realm that we're not even looking for a city because it just said here, the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So it's something that affects the whole earth, not just a city, unless there is a city that powerful, or the city might just simply be the, the home base of this powerful world organization, let's say. But whatever it is, the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. I think we need to stop right there and sort of see what that means. Now we know we have a city of Babylon. We know that it's, uh, it's being judged and it's already called a harlot. And so I am somewhat versed 
and studying uh, the biblical text. And when they say fornication, you have to understand they're not just talking about sex. Even though they might be talking about that as well. It's often used as a metaphor for betrayal or religious uh, betrayal. Uh, going away from something that you once believed in. Uh, that sort of thing. A, a change of heart or a being seduced into some other ideas that you originally would not have done. Uh, and so the, the fornication of the world was simply possibly could be as simple as buying the hype. I mean, we can take it from there. Uh, I, I don't think we're looking for a city as much as we're looking for something that influences the entire world very effectively to the point that the entire world essentially was drunk with the fornification, which means they bought it. So whatever they were selling, the whole world was buying. And then it says, on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the mother of harlots, and of the abominations of the earth. That, that's the title. Verse 6 goes on to say, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Now this is John. And so he was amazed at Babylon. Uh, and... So what is this thing we're looking for? It's gotten the whole world drunk with their fornication, or fornication, drunk with her. They're seduced. Something has seduced the entire world. They use the word fornication. Okay, so it seems like we understand what we were trying to do originally was our a viewer suggested we do a show comparing or to find out if our civilization our world uh is the biblical babylon that was her question that was her aspiration that we would do a show and find out or at least get uh some kind of idea so that was the premise of the show, not to tell you everything you need to know about Babylon from A to Z, but we felt like we should at least describe what it is, and so that's where we're at. And so now, this Babylon has been addressed as a whore, and mystery is in her title, and so I think that might be important. Uh, there's a mystery. Even at the very end, John is being shown a revelation about something that will happen in the future to the point of being at the end of humans' existence. Uh, a, a revelation of what happens at the very, very end. And so, understanding that, it gets a little more complicated. And we weren't sure if maybe you guys didn't sign on for a long show. And so we could sort of stop anywhere and then do another longer version if, or we could just do it like this. Well, let's just roll with it. We've already kind of lost that short show anyway. So we'll just roll with it till we get to like, we may have to do at least another part, but maybe we can figure it out. Because we're not really doing Revelations. We're just doing what Revelation says about Babylon. And so we've already found out that it's not necessarily a city. And so, or a place, or a country. Or, uh, the viewer obviously was wondering if America was Babylon. I, I mean, I'm quite sure that's what she was wanting to know. Or London was Babylon. Or your home is Babylon. Who knows? That's what she wanted to know. And obviously she was looking from the biblical standpoint. And obviously she was trying to get me to tell her or us to tell her that it was the end of the world. We're not sure. Because all these things probably match a million other 
civilizations when they got in certain levels of decay. Who knows? But that aside, we're discussing what Babylon is in the Bible. We can also look at what it says in the Quran. There's many references to Babylon. And so, there's a lot to be said in the King James Bible, so we're just using the fastest source to find out about Babylon. So, let's continue. The beast which you saw was and is not. And now it's become a beast, you see. And it is to ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to destruction. Those who dwell on the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life, from the foundation of the world, will marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and is to come. Well, that's pretty heavy duty. So we'll stop right there and digest that. And this is kind of how you have to do this. So that was verse 8. So now we learn it's not a city, not necessarily even a person. Now it's a beast. And so this Babylon is getting more interesting as we go along. And we already know that mystery is in her title. So we may not be... <laughs> We may not be so wise as to actually solve this mystery, but we can certainly keep trying. And that's what we're doing in verse 8. And let's gather where we are, and we'll see where we need to go next. Okay, I think it's significant here. Because to repeat uh, verse 8 again, the beast which you saw was and is not and is to ascend out of the bottomless pit. It goes on and it repeats that. So we'll repeat it because... Those who dwell on the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel when they see the beast that was and is not and is to come. So that's like a, almost like a riddle. And so we're trying to find Babylon, Mystery Babylon, the harlot Babylon. Anyway, so we're studying Revelations. We just read verse 8, verse 9. It's going to give us some clues. Now there's some uh, synopsis here after verse 8 that I can get into and I think I'll save that for later but here I'm not going to do that now because it kind of takes the uh, the punchline away but one of Revelation's key designations for God is the term one who was who is and who is to come well that phrase describes God as the sovereign of the universe or the 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 Father, the Creator. And so, as you heard just earlier, the description of Babylon was not quite the same. It's very similar, just short. And so, it does seem like it's a bit of a uh, Babylon is perhaps a church. Could very well be. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, which that's Babylon, and make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Next, we're going to talk about the fall of Babylon. And in that description, you'll get some really good insights on what this place as a city really was, because it was a spectacular city, very wealthy, and we'll describe that. Okay, so we'll just finish up here, going back to verse 1, uh, and John says, And these things I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his 
glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And so Babylon was destroyed in one hour, and it was a very sad tale. And we're going to go in more detail on that on our next video. We're running out of time with this one. But we did find out quite a bit, a lot, quite a bit about Babylon. And now we need to tie in some loose ends and find out just how Babylon, uh, described in this Bible, is, reflects our current society. And that was our purpose of this video. And we hope the viewer who requested it is happy for the moment.